You're listening to Minor Talk On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with Minor Talk by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. Welcome in. It is Minor Talk. We are live, presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. I'm Adrian Bradis. He's Sal Montes. North Texas defeats UTEP 80 to 72. You want to talk about it? Let's do it. 915 505 6009. Thanks to the Oscar Arieta Agency for bringing us Minor Talk after each and every UTEP men's basketball game. Uh, check out the Oscar Arieta Agency when it comes to your home, your auto, your life insurance, or even your commercial business insurance. Uh, check them out online, Oscar Arieta Agency.com. Well, the Miners have now lost seven of their last eight games. Uh, they lose this one in overtime fashion to North Texas, 80-72. to Let's take you back uh, earlier in this game. Miners are leading at one point uh, 65. Um, yeah, they, they go down in this one, and uh, they're leading 65-63. Tyler Perry hits that unbelievable three-pointer late in the game uh, to put – and propel North Texas up by two. Miners go down the floor. Otis Frazier gets fouled. He misses his first free throw, uh, which was tough in itself. And then he misses the sec- second one purposefully. And Calvin Solomon, off a beautiful spin move, goes up, tips it in for the tying bucket at the end of regulation. Miners tie it up. Uh, and it goes to overtime. And then in overtime, Miners are simply outlasted. UTEP is lacking depth right now. Um, When Calvin Solomon fouled out in the overtime portion, it kind of felt like UTEP was, it was just an uphill battle from there for the Miners to win. Uh, And I'm going to give UTEP a ton of credit in this game, knowing that I thought they played their best game uh, of the calendar year, but fans don't want to hear that. Moral victories don't count. Um, You know, we can talk all we want about how closely UTEP played against North Texas. This is the second best team in Conference USA. And UTEP right now is a 12 and 15 team right now that is, uh, you know, at the, near the bottom of Conference USA. I think they're 10th place right now, still uh, alongside you know Nor- UTSA, who is right behind them at 11th. But point is, the Miners are going up against the second best team in the league, and they dropped this one in overtime fashion. I thought they did almost everything to win this game, but when it comes to it, it's simple math. North Texas hits 10 free uh, three-pointers. UTEP hits only three. Uh, North Texas grabs 20 rebounds. The Miners grab 15, which UTEP has been great uh, in terms of the rebound margin. I, that's their defensive rebounds, but UTEP was minus two on the rebound margin altogether. UTEP also forced almost 20 turnovers again, yet they had 14 turnovers on their side, uh, a lot of those coming in the second half. And for the Miners, falling in this one is another disappointing loss for this team. Uh, you can give them credit for coming back and fighting in this one and competing. Uh, but, Sal, we're, we're talking about things that we've talked about all season long with this UTEP team, just not coming uh, through in the end when, when it really matters. Yeah, it, and these are the games that matter the most when it comes down to it, right? We talk about a margin for error that – get smaller at this point in the year if you want to prove um i think they've proved that they can hang that's that's not the that's not the argument here. The argument is sealing the deal, getting it done. We and we can go all the way back to December 29th when they took on UAB. You know, they lose in double overtime uh to the uh, the Blazers out in Birmingham. Also um you know, the very next day or not day, the very next game they take on Rice and they fall in overtime as well. What happens against La Tech? Close loss by 2. Yeah, you beat UTSA, who doesn't, right? But then you take on Rice on the road and you fall in um you know, at regulation, which that was another heartbreaker as well. So, long story short, we've seen this movie time and time again this year, and it's frustrating because you know that they're going to fight pretty much all game we understand that but the other team is going to fight just as hard if not more 
and it's not going to matter what you do ultimately. You know, it's Sal, uh, I agree with you completely. And I also look at just the top of the conference USA right now, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, UAB. UTEP is 0-5 against those teams, and they could be 0-6 uh, when it comes to next Saturday on the road against FAU. Uh, Miners just haven't beaten the best teams in the league, and that's just – it feels a little different than before because, you know – I know Conference USA is what it is this year. It's a better conference than it was in years past. But usually um, UTEP is able to beat the top three teams in the league. And this year, for whatever reason, they're competing, but they just can't come up with the victory when it's all said and done in the final stretch of these games. And, hey, for the Miners, this is their uh, fifth overtime game of the season. UTEP is battle tested in these late game situations, and the Miners are now two and three in overtime, zero oh and three in overtime when it comes to Conference USA games. Uh, UTEP is also one and five; that's the record in the month of February. Um, we said it to start the month. Uh, we'll say it here in the middle of the month. February is an absolute grind. It is. It yeah. really is. And Sal, you mentioned margin for error at this point of the season. There's zero. UTEP has to try to get as much momentum going into the conference tournament, knowing they are where they are right now. They're a 12 and 15 team. They're five and 11 in Conference USA, which is just a bad record. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, UTEP doesn't have the depth they once had this at the start of the season. They lost Malik Zachary in the middle of this game as well because he got. I pretty much um, elbowed to the face and busted his lip. And UTEP didn't have a backup guard for the, I mean, duration of this contest. Tay Hardy plays 43 minutes. Shamar Givens plays 44. Miners have to rely on those guys. Calvin Solomon ends up playing almost 40 minutes of action after Joe Golding said, what, 37 was too much last game? I mean, it's just these guys are are uh, extending themselves pretty much more than we've seen throughout the, the past part of the season. And, um, you know, I'm going to give a lot of credit to the bigs tonight, Sal. I really like the play from the forwards in this game. Loved what Calvin Solomon did. Uh, Zarek Onyema, he makes mistakes, but, man, 14 points, nails a three-pointer, uh, grabs four rebounds. He played some pretty good basketball tonight. Also, Kevin Kalu, uh, after we harped on him in the previous uh, show on Minor Talk, he comes out tonight looking great. I mean, he's playing excellent defense. He's flying all over on offense. He hit a free throw as well, which is always something to tip your hat off when it comes to Kevin Kalu and grabbed a pair of offensive yeah. rebounds. So uh, I liked his play in this one. So I'm, I'm going to give a lot of credit to the front court after this game, uh, knowing UTEP lost in overtime. And, and what I love most uh, between the two players you just mentioned, right? They, they went in there. We saw the hustle. We saw them, uh, you know, be aware of where they were at for majority of the time. But my favorite thing between uh, Zarek and uh, and Kevin Kevin um, Callow is the number of turnovers that these two players had combined. Looking at it here, only one turnover. Mm, I you love know? that. Good number. One turnover out of a combined um, 39 minutes between the two players. So a lot of a uh, lot of trust that you can you know have when those guys are on the floor because that's been a thing in the past. People were like they don't take care of the ball. They're all over the place kind of changed a little bit and I think they played a big factor in um you know ultimately in a large part of the success that they were able to have for the time that they had it our telephone number tonight is 915-505-6009 couple other stats that really jumped off for us uh, in this game UTEP for 17 turnovers UTEP get this Sal UTEP led for 25 minutes in this game North Texas led for 13 minutes the game was tied for six minutes and 24 seconds Nine times this game was tied, nine lead changes, uh, and then North Texas just pulls it out in the end. I, I loved what UTEP did to end the first half and to start the second half. They went on a 20-2 to run um, to close out the first half and to start the second half. North Texas did not make their first fro- uh, made bucket from the floor until I think it was like the almost like the 13 yeah. minute mark of the second half, which was just a testament to that defense that UTEP was playing to start that second half. And Tyler Perry hadn't done anything leading into that final shot that he hit to uh, lift North Texas up ahead of overtime. He didn't do any, he was like two of 11 from the floor at that point and made all his shots from the free throw line. Uh, hated the officiating tonight. I get the technical foul for Joe Golding. Um, he was really frustrated on that one, but it wasn't just that. It was like calls that would go UTEP's way, calls that would go North Texas way that just made absolutely zero sense. People all over social media, North 
were Texas fans, um, UTEP fans who were yep. watching remotely. They were frustrated big time with the officiating. Uh, and it's just, I felt like it kind of got out of hand at, at some points throughout this game. So I think it's a uh, Conference USA's finest, right? There you go. You talk about a, a shorthanded crew last game and how <laughs> poorly it was officiated. How about a fully, a, a full stack team out there, you know, just, just serving you up another order. So it, it was so funny. I'm looking at Twitter and I, and I have the, um, the filters set, right? UTEP, UNT, um, you know, Miners, Mean Green, any filter you could think of. And didn't matter which one I put, there was a lot of complaining from both sides, but I mean, hey, I'll always say this. They're bad, but at least they're consistent. There you go. They're always consistent. Consistently bad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, a big shout out to Tyler Perry, though. I mean, I'm talking about how he did not play well uh, all the way up until the end of this game. Well, good players find ways to win, and good players find ways to score buckets without necessarily playing well. Uh, he finishes with 20 points. He hit four three-pointers, which is really where he got his buckets from, and then hit eight free throws in this game. So, North Texas ends up beating UTEP 80-72. to If you'd like to talk about it with us we'll hang on with you as long as uh we get some calls here early on into the show our telephone number 915-505-6009 where does utip go from here i mean they've got the florida road swing coming up next week uh would love to hear from some of our listeners especially after a lively show on thursday where i think a lot of minor fans got their frustrations out um from that one let's go to twitter we got a bunch of tweets to get to 600 espn el paso on twitter you can also also use the hashtag minor talk in this one pinky checks in on twitter for the size of the crowd electric and very loud fan support tonight at the dawn hashtag minor talk about five thousand fans tonight pinky i thought it was a great crowd i mean really out of uh after we saw a pretty dismal crowd last thursday um utep gets a nice crowd here for saturday night so good stuff there uh pinky also tweets the show overtime and fans are leaving this i don't uh, comprehend hashtag minor talk he also says gotta learn to win these types of games both utep men's basketball and women's basketball hashtag picks up yeah uh, i know the women also fell today 67 yeah. 765 another close one and uh, for the miners that that's tough to lose that game on the road against North Texas I know that they had that back to back and I think that's how I would say it Sal I mean bottom yeah. line the fact that they had to play a game at noon um, on Friday and then lose on Saturday evening on such a quick turnaround. I hated that right there. Yeah, I think that's a part of it. Um, ultimately, the, they're the better team. There's there's no reason they should have lost. If there's a reason, I guess that could be it. Uh, but as far as like um, saying that the women need to learn to win as well in these tight situations, they've shown that time and time again. They just happened to lose this game and maybe a couple of others. But if you look at the games this year, there's been a lot of cheering going on in the final couple minutes, and they did it. Matter of fact, they were able to get the uh, the win over ranked uh, Middle Tennessee at home because they did just that. They pulled it out, but the men aren't doing that. So I don't agree with that at all. Uh, here to join us to talk a little UTEP hoops or maybe to talk about the uh, red-hot uh, Denver Nuggets, who are first place in the Western Conference going into the All-Star break, is our good pal Colin Deaver of KTSM. Colin, welcome aboard to Miner Talk. What's going on, my friend? Well, you know the, the miners and the nuggets—they're—they're they're both they're both miners. First of all, is really, ah, really what it is. I like it. Okay, yeah. good stuff. There you go. No, I've been waiting to drop that for five years, and I—I I dropped it now. <laughs> so, uh, really, I just like to call in and check it with my boys sometimes. Uh, great job with the show as always. Um, this seemed like it was going to be a chance to be like the signature win to potentially turn the season around midway through the second half. Uh, they're up 11. Um, I was preparing to ask them, like, where has this been all year in the postgame press conference? And unfortunately, it turned into um, just another close loss in a long string of them for UTEP. And I, I don't know that I remember a team that has lost like this, is, this many close games in like kind of the same manner that they've lost them this year. It has to be absolutely maddening for Joe Golding and his coaching staff uh, to see it happen just over and over again. But um, I, I don't even know, like, can you, you've obviously been around UTEP basketball more than I have, but um, it just, I just can't remember a team that I've covered ever, like this many close games where it just, it comes down to the wire and you just like uh, two or three plays here and there just end up deciding a game as many times as it's happened this year. I mean, they're like, how many plays away from potentially being like, you know, a 21 team right now? I, it just, that's, 
it's just been like the season of what could have been almost. You know, uh, Tim Floyd coached a team, Colin, back in 2016 uh, or 2015 16. I think that was my first year covering UTEP. And they lost a lot of close games that year. And I kind of felt like uh, this year's team reminds me a little bit of that team. However, that team was way more talented. They had guys like Irvin Morris, Lee Moore, Dominic Artis, Terry Wynn, uh, Omega Harris. They were far more talented than this team, but they lose a lot of close games and they, they bowed out of the CUSA tournament off a really close loss to a Mar- Marshall team at that point, but um, you know, I was I found something real interesting on Thursday, uh, Colin. Something that you and Joe Rod actually asked Coach Golding about the leadership or maybe the lack thereof, and it fired up a lot of our callers on Thursday. Some were very upset that uh, you know Golding would question kind of leadership and uh, doesn't really have a leader. But you know what? I, I feel like it. Fans kind of need a reality check to understand that this year's team does not necessarily have that single leader, and leadership is kind of hard to find in, in getting it consistently, night in, night out. Maybe they, they need a leader to kind of get them over the top and help them win some of these close games. Well, I, again, like for a, a lot of this game, the way they were playing, I almost thought that Joe said that in the press conference, like kind of as a way to fire the guys up, and they'd really responded. Maybe that's the case, and they just – you know, North Texas, like, let's give them some credit. They're a really good team and have been for a while, and they were just able to pull it out. Um, that's That was kind of my thought, kind of similar to what he did last year. They, like, lost – remember they lost Louisiana Tech at home last year, and yeah. Joe kind of went went off in the press conference a little bit, and they, they kind of changed the season. I, I, that was kind of how I felt, like, after that was, hey, maybe this is him trying to fire the team up. Because he tells – basically, he tells us everything that he's going to say to the team. Like, he's he's a pretty open book with them. So um, that, was, that was kind of my thought. And look, if he's if he's feeling comfortable enough to say that, you know, this late in the season, I mean that that certainly is probably how he feels, um, and it has to be disappointing for sure. Um, Colin, your thoughts on just the importance to close out the season strong. I mean, some of our listeners have totally checked out. Uh, they've called in and said that, you know, they're not going to be supporting this team anymore. But, you know, we've argued that there is some kind of uh, good to actually closing out the season on a strong note, knowing that you still have to go out and recruit in the off season. You still want mo- momentum going into the off season, and you don't want to end it on such a down note. Well, and two, the way they play, I mean, they, they play a, they play a style of basketball where more often they're not they're not they're kind of gonna be in the game. So if you're, I mean, I, if you're able to if you're able to flip some of these, I mean, I go back to New Mexico State baseball last year. I mean, they were awful the majority of the year, and then you get hot in the conference tournament, and you end up going to the NCAA tournament uh, on the baseball side. I mean, is that possible for UTEP? I mean, sure. Um, but I, yeah, I would say like, I mean, don't check out yet. I mean, like I said, the brand of basketball they play, like they're going to have a chance to win the majority of their games. It's just a matter of, are they going to execute a lot of the time this year? They haven't, but they are able to stay in games because of the defensive way they play. And man, if they can just knock down a shot, everyone, maybe Zerko Nyema is the cure to their, their three point struggles. Yes. This year. He, he was one for two today. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's time to check out completely. I understand the, the frustration this year. I mean, twelve and fifteen isn't anything that anybody wanted to, to see from them this year in year two after they win twenty games a year ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's you know there's still time. You know, you have what is it? You go FAU, FIU, and then middle, middle and Western in in some order or another, and then the conference tournament. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of time to to kind of finish strong and head into Frisco with some with some confidence. Yeah, and, and Colin, you touched on some good parts there because uh, Adrian and I have been talking about this, right? Like the games are close night in and night out pretty much. Although there's a lot of losses recently, you got to strike, no pun intended, you got to strike gold at some time. So one's got to fall in your wheelhouse. But looking at the final four uh, games left here uh, remaining on the season, realistically, how many of those four being FIU, FAU, the Florida road trip, and then, you know, Western, then middle at home in that order. Out of those four, over, under two when it comes to wins in the final? I don't think they're beating FAU. Uh, I don't think that's a hot take. Um, but, I mean, the other, I mean, every uh, they beat FIU. I think it's I think it's reasonable to yeah. say that, you know, they'll, they can kind of maybe, maybe not expect to win, but I think it's a game they probably could slash should win. 
and then you go uh, Western and middle at home, they're always going to have a chance at home against those teams. Um, Cause they, again, they, they were in those games on the road. So I think, I think that they, they, I think the, the chances they maybe split the next two, two trips, like the road trip to Florida, and then you split the home games as well. Um, I think, you know, I think there's a, there's a, a good chance of that. Yeah. Okay, I like it, Colin. Hey, appreciate your phone call, man. Thanks for uh, always giving us a, good, a call and giving us your insight. What's uh, what's on deck on KTSM? Uh, hopefully, more good, some good news after the uh, after the week of bad news that we've had. Uh, so that's that's what I'm hoping for. Good. All right, I love it. Hey, thanks, Colin. Really appreciate your call. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. All right, it's Colin Deaver, KTSM. Check him out on Twitter, Colin Deaver on KTSM. Uh, let's go to Twitter. we got a bunch of tweets to get to. Adrian at Enemy Win 3 tweets the show, I feel sorry for Coach Joe Golding. He's coaching his butt off, but he just doesn't have the talent. He's getting the most out of his players, but isn't good enough. Hashtag minor talk. I think that's pretty good characterization i mean what more could this team have done tonight realistically like what more could this team have done throughout the last part of the game knowing what we know from this team knowing that they're going to make mistakes knowing they struggle offensively i feel like i mean maybe they could have hit two or three more uh three-point shots and that's about it they actually were hitting their free throws tonight which was a a pleasant surprise they were 25 of 32 from the charity stripe 78 percent from the free throw line that's uh uncommon for Utah. Yeah, and at points when they didn't hit those free throws, they pretty much answered with a solid defensive possession or, you know, got a bucket on a, on their next offensive series. So that's kind of where they were able to to step up, but when I look at what they could have improved, although they had less turnovers than uh, than North Texas, I still think taking a bit better care of the ball would help out, especially when North Texas feasts off of turnovers. Yeah. Um, you know, we we look at the point differential that they're, they're Almost identical is the three point difference, twenty three to twenty, favoring North Texas. But I think what really kept them in the game today was uh, their second chance opportunities off of the offensive rebounds. Because yes, you know we look at it, North Texas out rebounds UTEP by um, by two, uh, you know thirty to twenty eight. But UTEP out rebounding North Texas thirteen to ten on the offensive glass, and you know basically getting fourteen more second chance points because of that. That was a huge part. Yeah, it really was. Sal. I, I feel like those. Those second chance buckets uh, were were huge, and the fact that UTEP capitalized the ones that they did uh, that was solid. The ones that were frustrating were North Texas grabbing those ten offensive rebounds on their side, and um, that number. I mean, North Texas slightly beating UTEP on the glass, thirty to twenty eight. That, I mean, that probably goes a long way when it's all said and done. Just knowing uh, how, how um, I guess, again, going back to your point, how small the margin for error really is when it comes to UTEP basketball. Hey, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. we got a lot more tweets to get to. If you want to give us a call, give us a call right now, 915-505-6009. We've got plenty of phone lines to get you up with us, 915-505-6009 to get into Minor Talk. We're presented by... By the Oscar Arietta Agency. North Texas defeats UTEP 80 to 72 in overtime. More after this, right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. All right, welcome back. Minor Talk continues here. We're presented by the Oscar Arietta Agency along with Sal Montes. I'm Adrian Bradis. Together we bring you Minor Talk today. Let's uh, continue on Twitter. A lot of tweets to get to. Kingsley Onyema on the show. At the end of it all, Miners need a go-to three-point shooter. It's a game changer and critical to team success, period. I agree with you, Kingsley. Matthew Castro tweets the show, Enough of the moral victories. Time to actually close out and win games. Disappointed is an understatement. Okay, uh, next coming up is Don Aguacate. Uh, actually, let's go to Minor Joe, who's next. I honestly believe that every team in Conference USA does not want to play the Miners in the tournament. Win or lose, they will give it their all. I agree with that. I mean, hey, UTEP is a pesky team. They might not pull these games out here in the regular season, but it just takes a upset in the Conference USA tournament, and that's really it, right? I mean, they yeah. could definitely play spoiler in the tournament. It's because I think the frustrating thing is that you know that they can win these games because they're they're within reach. 
um, at some point you got to strike it, right? And, yes. it, and I know obviously what three games now under 500, it's, it's not impressive at all. You look at what could have been, and yeah, coulda, woulda, shoulda is, is nice, but in reality, it's that they're three games under 500. However, you know, let's say they do get a little bit hot and play the way that they're playing now, but finally seal the deal. You know, that could spoil some trouble. But at the same time, the top teams in Conference USA, they're pesky and, and whatnot, too. That's they right. fight to the very end. So, um, you know, it's, it could go any way, basically. But still, though, a lot of the top teams in Conference USA play just as hungry as UTEP. Tristan Pence tweets the show, number one, I might be in the minority on this, but so applaud Coach Joe Golding getting the technical foul in the first half. I believe this really energized the team. The Miners outplayed North Texas tonight. They once again lost this game from the three-point line. Number two, I believe Coach Joe Golding is getting the most out of this team effort-wise. The Miners lack quality shooters and good bench coaching during the games. Four straight home lines losses and 10th place is just unacceptable with a team that gives as much effort as this one does hashtag minor talk uh your thoughts on those two comments sal uh you know what i think um i gotta agree with the technical foul uh, i'll say this though i think one of the coaches was gonna get it just so i happen to be golden <laughs> because looking at twitter right you talked about the referees and and um you know the reaction from a lot of the fans on both sides just not having it with the refs. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, one of them had gotten it. It just so happened to be Coach Golding. But you saw the response, though, from it. And I, I think that uh, may have played a part. I know that the last two technicals didn't really bode well for the Miners. Uh, the first one being um, UAB last year. And then the last one in, uh, what, Murfreesboro against Middle Tennessee. We saw how it affected the game. But this time it worked out. So definitely a, a good, good point there. And then as far as getting the most out of the team effort-wise, 100%. But we've we've seen that all year too. It's it's really not a surprise. It's just there it's within reach and it just hasn't happened yet. And I know I sound like a broken record, but look at the end of the tweet. Four straight home losses yeah. and a 10th place is just unacceptable and no matter how hard you're playing, no matter how hard you have played this year, ultimately you haven't gotten it done in majority of those games, and now you're you're staying in tenth place pretty much for uh, for who knows how long until they can seal the deal. You know, UTEP right now is projected to finish the season with seven wins in conference USA. We said five and eleven, so Ken Palm does believe they win two games exactly uh, to mm. close out the season. Sal, what do you think? One one out of those four games. Um, you know what? I'll say this. I think. Um, I think there's a good chance for a split. The reason I say this is last two games are at home. Um, something's got to give, you know. At some point, when you're battling when you're battling teams as close as you are, you got to get over that hump. Yeah, I know they're three games under 500. It could happen against the Western, against the middle at home, and then against the Florida international team. That game's winnable. And, and I know that you talked about, uh, or you and I had talked about this game, you know, results aside just pure basketball wise that it was one of their better games played maybe their best game played all year but I'm looking back at it and it's that 81-61 win at home against Florida International I think that was probably their best basketball this year and also um, you know their last win before they got one more in the span of a full month so, yeah, that's a really good yeah. point. I mean, they, and they blew out Florida International, which they didn't. Yeah. They haven't done that to anybody this year. So, yeah, that's a really good point there, Sal. I, I like that. I, I would just you? say, I would say that this year, uh, or to close out the season at FIU at Florida Atlantic, maybe they split that series and then they split the home series. So, I could see two wins closing out the season, fourteen and seventeen overall. Um, and I, that's a disappointment to me, at least, um, as far as their overall record, knowing the talent. Not really surprising. Uh, El Paso Visuals Deportivos tweets the show, Ivan Nikita. Um, in the end, your regular season record does not matter because Conference USA turn uh, Conference USA is a one bid league. So as long as you're playing well and hot when the conference tournament starts, we have a chance. Hashtag minor talk. Um, let me just say this, Sal. Just so everybody is clear. And and let's put this, let's pin this on the board. Let's pin this wherever we want. We'll pin it on Twitter. We'll pin it wherever. Pin it on our app. Pin it on our website. Conference USA is a one-bid league. 
Can, can I repeat that? Conference USA is a <laughs> one bid league. I don't care if Florida Atlantic was ranked uh, throughout this season. I don't care if North Texas has a great record too. They're breathing down Florida Atlantic's neck right now, yes, trying to that's get a that good race to watch. Too. Right, right, trying to get that first place overall Conference USA tournament. Uh, UAB is not far behind at all. They're twenty and eight overall right now. This is a one bid league. Let let me be clear. And, and you know what? People talk about if UTEP can get hot at the right time in the tournament, they have a pretty good shot. Well, how about if UAB, who's not even you know top two in conference, exactly. say gets hot? Middle Tennessee's fourth place. You know, look at where they were when they were taking on the Miners. Middle of the road. They're trying to itch towards that, um, you know, that top tier in Conference USA as well. And, um, hey, the final two games of the regular season, that really doesn't mean nothing, right? Those two teams want to try to get back on track because, yes, we know Florida Atlantic, um, you know, stats-wise and whatnot, is the best team in Conference USA. Well, guess what? They're not ranked anymore. So that means if they want to make it to the tournament, they got to win it in Conference USA's, um, you know, out in uh, Frisco when the time comes. So everybody's in the same boat. However, no matter how desperate UTEP can be if they're playing hot, you have four teams who are just as desperate because when the selection committee looks at these teams, they're going to say, you know what, Conference USA, not that impressive. No matter how close these games are, there's no at-large bids for this league. Whoever wins the tournament is winning it. You're right, but four teams at the top – might be even hungrier than you, Ted. Uh, all right, let me just show you something just to go off your point, Sal, because I think you make a great one. Uh, back to 2018. The regular season champion was Middle Tennessee. Tournament champion, Marshall. Regular season tournament. Uh, regular season champion in 2018, Old Dominion. The tournament champion, Old Dominion. Kind of an anomaly okay. right there. Uh, the pandemic season, there was no tournament. So North Texas uh, was, you know, they were the regular season champs, and we didn't even get the NCAA tournament um, to end up, you know, seeing what who would have ended up clinching that, okay? Uh, next up, regular season champ last year, Louisiana Tech. Uh, or ex- Excuse me, this was 2021. Louisiana Tech, the tournament champion, North Texas. Uh, last year, the regular season champion, North Texas, the tournament champion, UAB. So, it, it like, if you win the regular season, it means nothing. Usually, uh, the team who ends up winning the regular season isn't the team who ends up winning the tournament. So, for everybody across Conference USA. It's all about gearing up for the CUSA tournament. We talk about FAU, North Texas, UAB, but Middle Tennessee, Rice, Charlotte, if they get hot, those are teams that could oh, easily man. win the league. So it just uh, speaks to the balance, speaks to the parity in this league. But again, Conference USA, one bid league. Do not let anybody convince you otherwise. This is a one bid league, no matter what. <laughs> I know there's really good teams out there, but ultimately the selection, it's not 2005, 2006 anymore where mid-majors have, um, I don't want to say the upper hand, I don't think they've ever had the upper hand, but it's not like they have the same look from the committee that they did back then. It's it's way, way different now. Guarantee you, if it comes down to it, if there's a Big 12 team, I don't know the standings, it's just a scenario, yeah. but if there is a Big 12 team who's, you know, hypothetically sub 500 or a conference USA team who's seven or eight wins above 500, they're going to go with that big 12 team. Well, they're also going to go with a third place mountain West team over a conference yeah. USA team. That's the bottom line. They're, they're going to look elsewhere before they go conference USA's route. That's for sure. Exactly. Hey, let's uh, take our final time out of the show. If you want to weigh in, now's the time to do it. 915-505-6009. When we come back, we will give out our two awards. First off, our hot hand of the game presented by Winston supply el paso and then our player of the game brought to you by keats southwest north texas defeats utep 80 to 72 in overtime our final segment coming up right after this we're presented by the oscar idietta agency more minor talk right here on 600 espn el paso All right, welcome back. Final segment here, Minor Talk. North Texas defeats UTEP 80-72 to in overtime. Along with Sal Montes, I'm Adrian Bradis. We're closing out the show tonight. If you want to duck in a late tweet, now is the time to do it. A late call, 915-505-6009. Two tweets to get to. King Eric tweets the show, Why do they tease us like this, Adrian? Why? I don't know, Eric. 
I don't know. Joe Chacon tweets the show, the narrative has to change. Can't make free throws or threes and turn the ball over, but out-rebound and play great D, then make free throws, still play great D, but out-rebounded, et cetera, et cetera. The fact is, UTEP needs to play to compete a blank. Well, he was uh he has something coming up. We just read this tweet a little too fast for Joe, but we'll we'll close out your tweet in a sec, Joe. But you know what too? These games have an identity of their own. So what they do in one game is not necessarily gonna what they didn't do well in one game is might not translate over to the next game. They may fix that, but then they lack in another area. So I mean, listening to these games, we've seen it, right? They played much better than they normally do today, but they didn't make enough threes, and they did turn it over a bit too much. I, I don't think anybody can argue that that did hamper them. But you look in the game where they played FIU uh, the first go-round, right, because they're scheduled to play them again, they did all of those things well. Yeah, I'm and, with you. And, and they wound up winning. So it's it's not the exact reason for success, but every game is different, so there's things that they got to be better at in that game. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's get to some awards here on the show. Uh, first off, our hot hand award here on the show. This is brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso. Sal, we've got some good candidates for this. Shamar Given, 16 points, 5 of 8 for shooting. He also contributed with uh, two steals. Calvin Solomon, 12 points, 6 for 6 from the free throw line. He had three rebounds. Four assists, uh, one block, three steals, 38 minutes of action. Was UTEP's... Uh, UTEP only had two players who were plus in terms of efficiency, and he was one of them. Or do we go Zarek Onyema, who had 14 points, he hit a three-pointer in this game, he had four rebounds and a turnover in 24 minutes of action. Where are we going here for hot hand? For hot hand, you know what? I think um, great job today, but I think it goes beyond this game. It's it's a good stretch that he's on right now. I got to go with Zarek Onyema. Okay. You know, he, he was able to, um, one, he hit the three, which was huge. Everybody was going crazy for that. But also, two, um, just being aggressive and, and being a force on the floor. Yes, uh, last game, what, 16 points. Uh, so he a, a great, great job there. But for Zarek to uh, have another outstanding game. And then also to improve the uh, free throw shooting, going five for eight, getting four boards, um, just being really accurate active on the floor tonight and also too as active as he was only one turnover so uh yeah i'm going zarek all right i like it zarek onyema winning our hot hand award brought to you by wind supply el paso wind supply el paso is your local provider of champion heating and cooling products here in el paso and they also carry many hvac products and parts check them out online windsupplyelpaso.com or give them a, a call 915-859-859 Thirty-eight seventeen. That's Win Supply El Paso. Now, time for our player of the game. This is brought to you by Keith Southwest. Uh, process of elimination. We're going Tay Hardy on this one. Eighteen points, six of fourteen from the floor. He hit a triple as well uh, and contributed with five rebounds. Just two turnovers in forty-three minutes of action. Miners needed all eighteen of those points that Tay Hardy provided, and uh, he is the player of the game. This is brought to you by Keith Southwest. West. They are the leaders in industry precision metal stamping since 1958 with locations all across the U.S. and even in Mexico. Check them out online, KeatsSW.com. Uh, let's go to Twitter. Final thoughts here as we close things out. Joe Chacon uh, tweeting the show. The fact is UTEP needs to play a complete game. Plain and simple. So much uncertainty ahead is with the way that the NCAA has changed. You have to win now. Now, there's no building a program at our level anymore. Hashtag just saying, hashtag repping from Colorado, hashtag it's a whole new world. Coming from Joe Chacon to close up the show. Uh, Sal, the, we turn the page, we look over to next week. It's an afternoon game, uh, 5 o'clock on Thursday, and then an afternoon tip-off on Saturday. Uh, that'll be Florida Atlantic. Um, UTEP will turn the page, look to next week. And Sal, we talked about it again, but let's close out with these final thoughts. Uh, it's very important for UTEP to close out the season on a positive note, not even for um, you know a one-bid league like we're talking about for the CUSA tournament but for the future of this program just building steps and you want to finish this uh season on the right note not have it sour when it's all said and done yeah and um you know definitely some winnable games some losable games depending on which team shows up that night but um you're going up against a team that you blasted by 20 that's going to be your first uh, you know step on the road then you're going up against uh you know one of the best teams uh, in mid-majors this year 
But, of course, the number one team in conference, you would say right after that, you've shown you can compete with the likes of them. Now it's just up to you to uh, to seal the deal. They have they have an opportunity. I'll say that. Um, they, they do. You know, and then and then you get to close it out at the home where um, where you play much better, too. So. That being against Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, we've seen them compete. Game got away from them. But long story short, they've showed some promise at points in the games that they've played um, their their last four opponents in in the previous matches. Uh, I agree with that, Sal, completely. Um, that'll wind us up here on the show. We appreciate everybody for tweeting the show and for calling in. We re- really appreciate everybody for also listening in to us here on Minor Talk as well. For Sal Montes, I'm Adrian Broadus. We'll be back in action on Thursday as UTEP takes on Florida International. But for tonight, North Texas defeats UTEP 80-72 to in overtime. Thanks for listening to Minor Talk brought to you by the Oscar Arieta Agent We'll be back in action next Thursday right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.